Hey guys, today I'm going to show you my newest geometry script tool, which is a simple but powerful way to turn a texture into a box or a crate or a container like this. And you can have it closed or one end open or two ends open. And you can instantly create basically a high poly nanite ready model uh, by using the texture's displacement information and skipping the modeling process completely. And I'll show you how it works. All right, I'll start off by showing a couple examples of using the tool, and then we'll go into how it works and look at the blueprint. Uh, so first of all, I'm going to just drag one into the scene here, and uh, what I'll do is maybe just rotate this so the opening is upright, and I'll adjust the size here to make something... I'm going to try to make something like a, a flower box here, uh, maybe with some uh, logs. So I'm going to set the wall thickness here a little bit thicker, maybe 25. And I'm going to go to uh, Quixel Bridge and uh, look for a material that uh, will uh, represent the logs here. All right, so I'm going to go to Surfaces here and to Wood. And I've got uh, a whole category here for logs. And I'll just download one of these, maybe this one. Okay, and back in my project, uh, what I'll do here is select for the outside material here. We'll select the log, old log wall that I just downloaded. Uh, and I'll open up the material instance and I'll select uh, tiling here and I'll change the tiling, let's say maybe to uh, maybe three uh, in both axes. All right, and so that looks a little better, but it still looks pretty bad here. This, it, it doesn't really look like logs at all, obviously. It, uh, it looks like a square box with a picture of logs put on the outside. Uh, not very convincing, looks terrible. And uh, so that's where the magic comes in here. I can select a displacement map, uh, which comes with uh, pretty well every material you download from Quixel. Or if you made your own ma uh, texture map, maybe you use Quixel Mixer or Substance Painter. Um, all of those kinds of software will export a displacement map. So I'll find the one that uh, belongs to my material here, and that's this packed map here, old log wall. Uh, and then tessellation level, that's how many polygons we want to add to this uh, to create a high poly nanite uh, mesh. Um, and so I'm going to leave that at 200, and the displacement amount I'm going to set maybe to 25. We want a lot of displacement for logs and uh, the displacement UV scale. I need to match the scale that I had set in my material instance. So I'll set that to three on both axes. And uh, just before I hit add displacement here, what I'm gonna do is change the lighting. I'm gonna go to uh, lighting only, and we can see perfectly well how flat this box is. And so uh, I'll click add displacement here. Okay, now we can see we've got something that looks like actual logs. Uh, it's not flat at all, it's displaced in the form of the texture. And uh, I'll just turn back uh, lighting here, uh, lit mode I should say. All right, and it's not perfect by any means. Uh, you know, you can adjust the UV scaling or the amount of displacement for sure, touch it up. Uh, but certainly for uh, a couple of options in the side here and clicking a button, uh, this is not bad. This is something that you would have to know at least a little bit about modeling to go to be able to make this say in Blender. And that would take you, uh, you know, a few minutes. And uh, in this case, I was able to just do that in seconds. And of course, Quixel Bridge contains all sorts of, this is all just the types of logs that you could select, all kinds of uh, other types of wood underneath these other categories as well. Um, and you know, there's literally hundreds of types of just wood. Um, and then for other types of crates or containers or shipping containers you might make, you might use something underneath the metal category, uh, which again contains hundreds more textures just under corrugated metals, for example. There's uh, you know, 30 or more textures here. Uh, and of course, you can use textures from anywhere else or make your own with Quixel Mixer or uh, Substance Painter or something like that. Um, so just being able to go from texture to model is a very powerful, very quick way to uh, create some assets for your game. Uh, all right, so I'm going to make one more uh, example here. I'll just drag out a new copy of my tool. All right, and uh, this time what I'll do, I'll leave it in this orientation, but I'll make it uh, a little bit bigger here. 
And uh, I'm going to make something that looks uh, something like maybe a shipping container that you might find in a shipyard or a, at a port or a harbor. And so I'll go back to uh, Quixel Bridge here. Okay, and I'll go to the uh, maybe the corroded category here. And uh, there we go. I'll find this one, shipping container it's called actually. Uh, so I'll add that to the project. And uh, I'll select that from my material here in the drop down. Okay, and the first thing that I would want to do with uh, a typical material when I apply something like this is I'm going to want to adjust the UVs. So I'll go to my material instance, open that up, check tiling, and uh, we'll set the tiling here. Let's play around and maybe uh, set the tiling X to 2, uh, maybe more like 3. And uh, let's check if we change tiling Y here to 2, uh, or also maybe 3. Uh, four. Now let's go back to three. And what I'm going to do here is just uh, adjust the UVs until this bottom strip here is along the bottom corner. So uh, we'll just drag this manually. All right. Uh, so that's not too bad. And so what I need to do now is make sure that I copy these uh, figures over to my tool here. So I'm going to, I've got three for tiling X and for tiling Y, I'll just hit control C. And then over here, I'll put in uh, three and uh, I'll paste control V for the other number there. All right. And uh, let's set our displacement amount to uh, maybe 20. And uh, we'll take a look at this. Uh, or I'll set the displacement map as well here to the one that matches my shipping container. And I'll turn on uh, lighting only again, and uh, we'll just take a look at the uh, results here when I hit displacement. Okay, so we've turned this uh, boring looking box into uh, essentially this crate here with all of this detail. Uh, and just go back to lit mode here. All right, and then again, it's not perfect. You know, there's a little bit of artifacting happening, but uh, it's pretty good for a one click model. All right. Uh, and so uh, with both of these uh, tools, of course, what I can do is I can select this, um, go down here to uh, generate a new static mesh, and I will just wait for the engine to generate that mesh, and it's going to create a mesh in a new folder here, folder called Meshes Generated, uh, and there we go, we've got that mesh, and I can see here the vertices count is uh, almost 2 million. And so I just right away, I'm going to right click that, say enable nanite, and we'll wait for that. Okay, and now I can drag out uh, this as a static mesh to use in my scene. We'll adjust the uh, orientation here. All right, uh, perfect. And uh, so now, of course, you, know, you can use this like any other uh, mesh. Uh, and I could save this one to a, a static mesh as well. And what I can do also with uh, something like a crate here, before I make my uh, static mesh, I'm just going to duplicate this. So I press Control D to make a new one in place. And uh, I'll select that one on the inside. And uh, we'll just grab the handle here and adjust it to be a little bit smaller. Okay, yeah, then what I can do is find uh, like a plywood here on uh, Quixel Bridge. Uh, or maybe I'll get one of these uh, plank materials instead. And we'll add this wooden plank wall. All right, and I'll change my material up to that plank wall. And uh, the displacement map as well. Uh, and I'll find that material here and open the material instance. And let's change the tiling here. Maybe three works out. Well, again, for this one, three in both axis. Uh, and I also want to change, uh, in this case, I don't want these planks uh, going up and down here. I'm going to change the UV rotation in my tool to 90 degrees. And now they're running uh, front to back. Uh, and all right, so again here, we've got a pretty flat looking uh, surface. It looks like wood planks, but pretty flat. So uh, we'll apply our displacement and see if we can't improve that. I'll first change the displacement UV scale to match. All right, 
And again, like magic, we've got what now looks like actual uh, boards lining this crate instead of just uh, a flat texture. All right, uh, so that's basically uh, the couple of examples that I wanted to show you. And now we'll take a look at the actual uh, tool itself here, uh, which is a fairly simple tool. Okay, so we'll start off here uh, on the rebuild event. What we're doing first is just making a box and uh, you can control the size with that handle for the box size, so that's pretty basic. Uh, then we've got is open and is open both ends. So we'll just take a look here at the uh, tool again. I'll just delete this one from the middle. Uh, and of course, uh, we've got is open checked by default. You can close that if you want. Let's say you wanted to make a fully closed uh, crate or container or whatever. Uh, and you can also open the other end if you want it to be a uh, pass through uh, or for whatever reason. All right. Uh, so this is going to basically create another box on this uh, on the scratch pad, this compute mesh. And the box here is going to be just a little bit smaller than the first box by the amount of uh, wall thickness. So you can set your wall thickness and that's going to determine how much smaller this box is. And then it does a Boolean subtract and subtracts this second box from the first one. Um, so pretty simple stuff there. We can rotate the UVs if we put in a setting. If we don't change that from the default of zero, it uh, doesn't do anything. And then it, uh, we set up the material, only one material in this case, the outside material. All right, down here we've got the displacement. And so when you click add displacement, uh, it's going to basically add this uniform tessellation to add more polygons to the model. Uh, and you can set how much tessellation by changing that value of tessellation level. Uh, then we apply the displacement itself from the texture map uh, according to the displacement amount that you can also adjust. And of course the UV scale and offset that you can match to your material instance that you've uh, adjusted. Uh, and then after that we do a handful of things just to sort of fix up the model. Uh, we compute the tangents, compute split normals, uh, repair the normals, uh, and recompute the normals. So, and some of these might not be um, exactly necessary or maybe in uh, poor order here. Uh, that can maybe be improved, but it works pretty good for now, so I'm going to leave it like that. Uh, and that's pretty much the entirety of the tool. That's how it works. Um, very simple, but very powerful in that it takes uh, what is basically a, a very basic form of uh, a box or a shell of a box, uh, and using the textures, displacement information, turns that into uh, high poly models. And so one of the uh, major strengths of using tools like this in the Geometry Script plugin is you can have, say, a team member that's decent at modeling who can create these tools. Uh, this one obviously very simple, but you can get a lot more complex with it and um, make something you know, more specific to your project or game. And then you could have other team members who maybe aren't as good at modeling or don't do modeling really at all, uh, who can take those tools and use those to make all kinds of variations and uh, different shapes and sizes and you know, make a, an environment or a scene uh, using the tools. Uh, and so it can be a game changer depending on uh, the kind of project you're doing or the kind of work that you're uh, looking at. Uh, like just for an example here, let's say I was trying to make a big shipyard with a bunch of these shipping containers. Uh, as part of a scene or a level or environment. Uh, and so I would want to make, uh, you know, a bunch of variations of containers so it doesn't all look the same. And normally in a normal workflow, you would only have the time to model a, a handful of these or depending how much work or time you wanted to spend on that specific aspect. Uh, in the same amount of time now using a tool like this, uh, you know, you could make uh, 12 or 15 or 20 different uh, models uh, you know, outsides, insides, and you know, you can take whether existing textures or your own in-house textures uh, and you can make, uh, still make a ton of variations even just by shifting the UVs and tiling the UVs a little differently uh, and making a, a new specific uh, bespoke 3D model for each uh, one of those variations. Uh, so you can introduce a lot more variation a lot quicker into, uh, you know, a scene like that, for example. All right, so that pretty much wraps up the video and uh, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.